<laughs> Hi, Jason. How's it going? Uh, we are here at the Instruo tent, right? Yeah, half tent. We've uh, half scaled tent. up this year. Yeah. Um, so what have you got to show us this year? Uh, two new modules, which uh, we actually got our act together and preempted. So we launched them a week before Superbooth. So we've got a 4HP clock management module and random voltage generator and a new transistor ladder filter, which is the, the successor of the, the first filter that I did as Instro, which um, uh, has been out of stock for a while now. So this is a transistor ladder filter crammed into 6HP. Nice. So uh, yeah, let's hear let's hear that filter because yeah. that's obviously a very nice and easy one to demo, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, so what what is unique about the kind of filter core? Um, so the try was the first filter that I did as Instro, and it was you know very much based on you know the famous classic schematics. But uh, I used a, I used a chip that was then made obsolete at certain points. So it was like um, you know a matched transistor pair IC and. Uh, I think I bought the last lot that Mauser and DigiKey had of them way back, so it was, it was a finite lifetime of it anyway. Uh, so this, I've, I've kept the same circuit topology, but it's, uh, it's all discrete transistors now for this. Um, yeah, and just sort of slimmed down and quite a few features crammed in. So uh, we can see input, output, cutter frequency, resonance, uh, and most importantly, VCA. So this is VCA and filter built into one. Um, I'll, I'll get some sounds coming through with just a basic sawtooth wave. Uh, let's go. No depth. So yeah, the classic uh, transistor ladder sound gets really squelchy. Um, so I've tried to kind kind of combine both East Coast and West Coast use cases with this um, so you know there's not been a uh, low pass gate in the instro range up till now so this kind of covers that you know covers that aspect um, but i tried to keep it so you could use it as the typical oscillator filter vca type approach so you could patch in through you could then set this to being post uh, so this switch here defines the vca to be either pre or post filter uh, so post you can get that classic signal flow Pre is kind of where I designed it as a default because it means that if you have the bias up uh, at about 12 o'clock, that's roughly unity gain through the VCA. But pushing it further, you're able to really drive the input signal into the, into the transistor stages, which uh, yeah, it saturates really nicely. It also sort of like reins in and tightens in the resonance really nicely. With these these sort of transistor ladder circuits, there is a lot of um, I had to do a bit of compensation. So there's there's still a, a considerable more low end when the resonance is brought down. So you lose that when you bring in resonance. But it's it definitely sits a lot more consistently than the, the its predecessor did the the tri filter. So I managed to get things a lot more tightened up. What I'll do I'll bring this up to being super soft from the the crew, and I'll bring up depth. Boost that a little bit. really nice and warm so I very much designed this to be a third and chain from Harmony into Psych or Kruin something that's you know rich sawtooth waves into Ara uh, to give me a, you know, a really rich either paraphonic or, or monophonic voice so we'll do I'll patch up a bit of control from Harmony here let's go through an envelope envelope into Ara and look at how the CV is constructed on this so just controlling volt per octave manually over the oscillator uh, CV input on the ARA, we've got volt per octave, uh, so that's that's suited for traditional key tracking, uh, or if you have it self-oscillating, then it'll, it'll track volt per octave over its resonant sine wave. Uh, but for the main CV input, which is the one at the top here, uh, it's routable to either the VCA, filter cutoff, oops, tapped it twice there, filter cutoff, or both simultaneously. Uh, so that's just cycled through with this, this uh, top level button here. So I'll set it to both just now, so that we're controlling both the VCA amplitude, which is defined pre-filter, so we're going to drive that in a bit and then open up the cutoff frequency with the envelope. So a 
10 inverter in the first stage, so you could even you know, keep your bias up and do degrees of reverse swell and ducking. that's all very subtractive traditional east coast approach uh, to get into more west coast plucky territories if I get the CV out of here just disable that there's a built-in strike impulse envelope so what I'll do I'll give us a clock from the tie here and just patch that straight in here so it's a resonant low pass gate in this case because it's controlling both the uh, it's a fixed amplitude envelope that's hitting both the filter cutoff and the, the VCA bias. So much more kind of flexible than a normal kind of VCA right? I, I think so yeah yeah it's um I mean it, the, the VCA aspect if you if you set it to post then you're getting a bit more traditional control over uh, you know just just amplitude shaping over the, the sound through the VCA in which case the the input signal is just going into the filter at unity but having it set pre it just gives you that back so it's, it's almost like a preamp gain stage yeah um. ah, that's all I was gonna do. okay so the, the FM so far I've shown it mapped to the VCA and or the filter it can actually further be mapped to the resonance uh, and the decay time as well. So this is where it starts to get into more buried features. Um, uh, so let me just engage it on. There we are. So I'm holding this button. It's blinking yellow, so that's indicating it's now mapped to decay. So I can now send random voltage from my clock signal from the sample volt. random voltage source, quantize that, so seeing as we're using it now what is going on with the uh, with this uh, clock yeah, so quite a few things going on. Yeah, like as I said, like this has been production ready since 2020. So this has got, uh, this has had a lot of R&D going into it. A uh, bit of confusion with the, the name tie. This is what I always designed as a tie, but there was a limited edition module that was a sample and hold, a bit more bare bones that I did as a limited run during COVID, uh, mainly just because I, I could at the time. Um, so this is an amalgamation of various different algorithms and patch techniques that I've used for years that I've tried to just condense into a, a single unit. So what I'll do, I will kill the volt per octave. Let's just keep this up. Get a more like a you know, metronome type pulse. There we go. Okay, and we have the clock output from the tie going to the clock input of the arrow so so from tap facing tempo, tap tempo yep. right um, what I'll do quickly I'm gonna load in a, let's go with sample seven oh no. just gonna load in a drum loop on the looper just one from the, the sample library and I can use this as an example of you know what could be a, a master clock in a system uh, so if we listen to this That'll do. Okay, so let's look at this output here. So the clock output, this is giving me just a rigid division derived from the, the master length of the loop. Um, so if I were to use this, for example, to clock my metronome or ARA, then perfectly in time, and that's going to follow locked into wherever the tempo of the playback is. Um, so the phase is perfect because it's derived from the source. So let's extrapolate this. I'm going to patch this through the tie, use this clock output, and use this as my master clock, or uh, you know, ad adapt ad adaptation of the, the master clock. Uh, and we can hear it's, it's already playing what it was just doing, but we're not hearing this as a direct path from my master source. So if I speed up, slow down,
tracking it. Yeah, yeah. So a few things going on. It's 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 reading an average of delta time. So it's taking it's looking for a new BPM that's stable. It's latching onto that, but then once it's latched onto that for a couple of couple of beats, it will it will look is it falling behind the beat? Is it ahead of the beat? And it's going to just gradually align and continually do that. So it's there, there's a constant degree of hysteresis filtering ongoing. So if, uh, it's a bit bright in here but uh, occasionally it's going to be blinking yellow while the clock pulse is running so yellow is just an indication of I'm you know I'm working on it I'm constantly adapting so uh, the, the buzz phrase I've gone with is um, technically loose but uh, musically tight for uh, for uh, practical use cases uh, so this of course this is a uh, 64th divisions of this master loop so if I like break that down to half to 30 seconds if, the, if it's a slower clock overall, it will take a bit longer to, to adapt and, and, and phase align, but it still follows pretty seamlessly in a lot of contexts. It's as good as a it's as good as a, a musician, if not better. That, that was the goal. That it kind of has yeah, that yeah. musical the way that it um, the the way that it kind of catches up feels kind of musical in that yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. So what I'll show next is I'll bring the fader all the way down. So far, we're just looking at this as a clock mechanic. Uh, toggle switch is in the down position, so with the four lines that's giving just steady steady clocks. If I toggle it up, we're now engaging this uh, probability clocking engine. So we can hear now it's occasionally skipping beats. So fader all the way down, this is <laughs> this is giving a coin toss chance of, of missing, missing a beat. Um, as I bring up the fader, I'm going to be introducing a uh, a wider range of available musical subdivisions. So say we're starting with a quarter note of crotchets, we go to crotchet triplets, into uh, quavers, quaver triplets, semi-quavers, it'll go all the way up to 64 notes, so all the way up and we're going to get much faster bursts of ratcheting. Um, Good for hi-hats. Yeah, yeah. You're really making nice trap beats. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> So I'll dial it into something that's just going to be ticking over with a few flourishes in there. And even if I'm like speeding up, slowing down, it's going to be following and because these uh, these uh, probability variations are derived from the master tempo, it's all going to be like locking in, in time. Um, so it's also got some uh, CV outputs, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So top section is the analog section, analog white noise, uh, sampling old input and output. So the white noise normal is there. Uh, by default, that is, there we go. Uh, the analog sample and hold is following the master clock. So if I use that as just a basic pitch control over my my voice. You can hear we're getting the ratchet timing over the top of the, the bigger time notes. Um, I'll set it to straight clocks just now. Uh, I'm going to just quickly reset that to make sure it's in the default state. So if we look at this next output, this is the arguably the second sample and holds, but it's uh, there's a bit more to it. So it's it's a digitally derived output. So there are six built-in algorithms that generate random voltage in a wide range of different ways. So uh, I'll start with algorithm one. So wider range, we're hearing this as uh, zero to ten volts random random pitches. Uh, if I engage the rhythmic probabilities, this one by default is going to follow the ratchets as opposed to just following the, the core BPM. So you kind of get this parallel of like layer timings uh, between the two random voltages. Uh, what I'll do next, uh, let's kill the drums and let's just go with a more static, static tone. So bring that down. Kill the strike. There we go. Okay. So let's go to. Um, actually, there's a few more things in this algorithm, even. Uh, so let's bring the dip. Go to straight clocks. Okay. So for each of the algorithms, there is a. There are a range of different parameters that can be modulated. So algorithm one, if I bring the fader up gradually. We're applying slew to the random steps. Um, using external CV, if I squeeze in here, so I'll just use this 1F fader to show positive CV, negative CV. So 
going up to zero to five volts, that's going to be doing the same thing as bringing up this fader, adding CV. If I go in reverse and go zero to negative five, that's stalling the, the sample and hold. But it's not just a, a gate state, it's actually a variable from zero to negative five, where it's going from 100% chance of a new step to 0% chance of a new step. So we get a, a control over probability of that aspect. So when uh, uh, you said that these are out now, do you yep. have kind of like price point on, uh, on both yes, of these? Uh, so the, oh, sorry. Uh, so the ARA is retailing at, uh, oh, what are they retailing at? 329, I think. And then the tie is 259. Uh, I'll double check that with you. So <laughs> you can do overlays or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's the, the price point. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably wrap up there because the, the other algorithms get get deep, so there's a lot of stuff crammed in, a lot of like probability. Yeah, it looks like the there's TV, a lot of features LFOs, within uh, just yeah. four HP there. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Jason, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>